Hi everyone, this is Andrew here. Uh, to welcome to the first of the series of six video clips that I'll be sharing with you partial fraction as well as binomial series expansion. In this first video clip, please print your notes first for 1.1 that is on techniques to partial fraction. Okay. Now, partial fraction is actually a concept that you have actually learned in secondary school syllabus. However, we are actually revisiting this concept because we need it for our binomial series expansion. Okay, so uh, in this video clip, I will actually be going through three different methods of par doing partial fraction. Okay, the first method, of course, is called this thing called cover up rule, which some of you will not be very familiar with. Okay, the second method is this thing called comparison or coefficient. And finally, the third method is this thing called substitution method. Okay, so let's take a look at what is first meant by a rational function. Okay. Now, a rational function basically is actually a fraction. The difference is that the numerator, okay, denoted by n of x, as well as the denominator, denoted by d of x, are both polynomials in x. Okay. Let's take for example, in your notes it says that nx equals 1, okay, and dx equals x squared minus 4. So the rational function would have been 1 over x squared minus 4. Okay. Let's take a look at the second example that is on your handouts. That is nx equals to x to the power 5 and dx equals to x squared minus 1. Now in this case, the rational function would be x to the power 5 over x squared minus minus 1. Now, though these are two different rational functions, what is the very, very important point that I would like to bring up to you is that in this first example, the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. Such a rational function, which we call it a proper rational function. Okay. Then how about the second case? For the second case, our numerator is x to the power of 5, whose degree is 5. Whereas for the denominator, the degree is only 2. We call such a rational function a, an improper rational function. Okay. Now, for improper rational function, we actually need to convert it to a rash, proper rational function. And how do we do that? We go by this thing called long division, which all of you are very familiar with. Let's make use of this example, okay, where we actually reduce this improper rational function into a proper rational function. Okay. Let's see this case. Okay. We use long division and we do the following x to the power of 5 divided by x squared minus 1. When you divide x to the power of 5 by x squared minus 1, you will look at x cubed, okay? multiply by x squared, that gives me x5. Then x cubed multiplied by minus 1 gives me minus x cubed. Okay? And we will subtract one from the other and we get x cubed. However, the degree of this is still bigger than the degree of the divisor. So we think of what is it that must multiply x squared to give me x cubed. So we can say that it's x times x squared give me x cubed. And x multiplied by minus 1 give me minus x. And again, you subtract. And we will get x. Now, once the remainder is of degree smaller than the degree of the divisor, we stop at this stage. And we notice that this x to the power of 5 over x squared minus 1 can then be written as x cubed plus x. Okay. Then followed by the remainder, which is x 
divided by x squared minus 1. Okay, so we have actually converted an improper rational function to a polynomial plus a proper rational function. And then we go on to the next stage to reduce this to, into the partial fraction. Okay, we'll go through the example that is given in a handout that, uh, and I'll be illustrating with to you the three different methods of doing partial fractions. Okay, let's take a look at the first one. Okay, we have 2x plus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 3. In this first method, I'll be using this thing called cover-up rule. Okay. And how does this cover-up rule work? The first step is to write this algebraic function as a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 3. Okay. And how do we find a and b? We use this thing called cover-up rule. What does cover-up rule work? First, for this x minus 1 term, to find the value of a, we cover the x minus 1. And we substitute x equals 1. How do we get x equals 1? See, looking at the denominator, we ask ourselves what is the x value that makes the denominator equal to 0. Of course, it will be x equals 1. So we cover the x minus 1, and we substitute x equals to 1 into this part of it. Okay, so our value of a would have been cover the x minus 1 and substitute x equals 1 into the rest of the term. So we will have it as 2 times 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 3. Okay, and we will get our value as 3 over 4. Okay, let's try to use cover rule to find the value of b. To find the value of b, we first cover x plus 3. This time round, we substitute x equals minus 3 into this part here. Okay, why x equals minus 3? Because it is the value that makes this denominator equal to 0. So our value of b would have been 2 times minus 3 plus 1 over minus 3 minus 1. And we will obtain 5 over 4. Okay. Once you can get the value of a and b, we will finally present our answer as 2x plus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 3, as 3 over 4, x minus 1, plus 5 over 4, x plus 3. Okay? This is the first method of using cover-up rule to actually solve this problem. Okay, let's recap this problem cover up rule again. So what we will do is that we first break it up into two partial fraction. Okay, because this two, you can see, is the same as the factors given in the denominator. And to find the values of a and b, for a, we cover the x minus 1 and substitute x equals 1. Because x equals 1 is actually the value that makes the denominator equal to 0. Okay, so we have 2 times 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 3, and we get 3 quarter. To find the value of b, you cover x plus 3 and substitute x equal to minus 3 into this part here. And we will obtain 5 over 4. And after that, we just finally present our answer in this manner. Okay, let's take a look at the second and third method. The second and third method are two methods that are actually very familiar to everyone. So we will actually just have a recap, okay? Okay, for the second method, okay? Again, same example, 2x plus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 3, okay? For this second method, we'll be going through this thing called comparison coefficient. So first step, as usual, we break it down into this partial fraction, and our aim is, of course, to find the value of a and b. Okay? In comparison of coefficient method, we will first combine these two partial fractions back using the LCM. Okay? 
So we will have it as A times X plus 3 plus B times X minus 1. Okay, right? Then we will just simplify by gathering all the X term together and gathering all the constant term together. Okay. Then we will next compare this with the original expression. So we will have a plus b. Okay, if we compare the x term, okay, we will have a plus b okay, equals to 2. Okay, we call this of course equation 1. And then we compare the constant term this time around. And for comparison, comparing of constant term, we will have 3a minus b equals 1. Okay, so we have 3a minus b equals 1. Okay, equals 1. And then you do simultaneous equation to solve the, for the values of a and b. And again, we will obtain the value of a as 3 over 4 and the value of b as 5 over 4. Okay. Finally, we go on to a third method. There is this thing called substitution method. In the substitution method, what we're going to do is, as usual, write it as a over x plus minus 1 plus b over x plus 3. Okay? And then you multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator. So we have 2x plus 1 equals to a multiplied by x plus 3 plus b multiplied by x minus 1. Okay? Then we choose two values of x to substitute inside. If we choose to substitute x equals to minus 3, that will make this term 0. And so we will have the following. Okay. And of course, you can then find the value of b, which is minus 5 divided by minus 4. So it's 5 over 4. Then you substitute x equals to 1, right? When you substitute x equal 1, this term vanishes and we will have it as 2 times 1 plus 1. So we have 3 equals to a multiplied by 4. Okay, this term is 0. And so we will obtain our a to be 3 over 4. Okay, so after we have done that, just like before, we have to present our answer in this manner. A is 3 over 4 and B is 5 over 4. So we come to the end of this example and in the next uh, video clip, I will share with you another example where we use partial fraction. Okay, thank you.